Welcome everyone to the week four go to session. So this is the final go to session of the month. Uh, yay! Um, yeah, this is the final meeting. So we're pretty much near the end. Believe it or not, you have also persevered. Okay, so you've been looking at your role models all month and how they have persevered in their industries. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but this is just a reminder that you've persevered as well. You've overcome obstacles because um, these full sale classes they move fast, right? Uh, but the good news is we're nearing the finish line. Um, and as you'll see in this session, um, which will probably be pretty, sh well, I shouldn't say pretty short, but it will be maybe a little bit shorter than the first sessions, which ran over an hour. Because uh, mostly today I'm going to issue some reminders. I'm going to offer some rev uh, some advice regarding revision. And then we're going to get into some reminders of what you need to do this week for your final project. Okay, so um, feel free to use the chat. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, I'll try to answer them, or Ms. Chapman will will jump in and try to answer them as well. Um, but let's get rolling. So yeah, the focus of this session is on revision, okay, and the final project. Those two things go together. Um, we'll get more into the specific details of the final project near the end of this session, but just as a quick reminder, um, yeah, there are kind of uh, a couple big things to focus on, but, but uh, the biggest perhaps is that, yes, you're going to revise the essay that you just handed in, because remember, at this stage, you've received feedback from your peers, you've probably also received feedback from your instructors, if you're in my class, let me see, is there anybody from my class in the room right now? Um, looks like, uh, yeah, Tedessa is in my class. Um, I'm still working on the essays, so I apologize for falling behind. I got seriously ill um, on Thursday and Friday of last week, so that put a an, an, an interruption into my grading. Um, and then I had to spend the weekend um, focusing on, on another class. But uh, if, you're, if you're in my class, you're going to get feedback um, <clears throat> over today and tomorrow. Okay, so it's coming. And for now, you've gotten feedback from your peers, so you do have some comments to look at already so you might already start thinking about revision uh, <clears throat> but yeah if you're in my class you're getting re uh, feedback real soon and you'll still have like five full days right Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday uh, to work on your final projects um, so you're not being left in the wilderness or anything um, okay um, another key component for this week's activities is this idea of reflection of actually taking a look inward um, for this class, that means really examining what you've done this month, um, how you've progressed, um, what you successfully accomplished. Um, because when I get into the final project reminders, um, there is a short reflection you have to write. Um, the good news is there are specific questions that you'll answer. They're on the assignment sheet, and I'll feature them in a little bit. <clears throat> uh, but yes, uh, self-reflection is part of the final project as well. Uh, Logan says, finals can be anything. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that means. Excuse me. I, I, I've, I've got. <laughs> I'm still getting over being sick, so I'm. I have to cough uh, uh, quite a bit. I'm going to try to cover my microphone when I do so. Um, can the finals be anything? Um, I assume Logan means the actual format, right? Because probably if you've been keeping up with uh, the go-to sessions and maybe you've been taking a sneak peek at the assignments. Uh, Logan says, like, I can present it as a newsletter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll get into those, those details, but yes, you're going to revise your original essay and you're also going to put the essay in a new format. Okay. Um, and that format can take, um, a number of different forms. Um, I'm not sure anything is, is quite the right term, but yes, you have a variety of ways to deal with that. And we'll, we'll talk about some of those options, um, a little bit later, but yeah, there's something like a newsletter. Um, is, is certainly acceptable. Okay, so yeah, when we get into reflection, you'll be asked to consider things like what have you, what have you accomplished? Um, what struggles did you encounter uh, on your projects? How did you overcome these obstacles? Like if I were to ask you just now, um, what were some of the struggles you had to deal with this month? as a student in English class, or if you, if you think about your activity or, or writing about your specific role model, um, were there any struggles that you had to overcome? And if so, uh, who wants to share some? Uh, Logan says APA formatting. <clears throat> um, yeah, that one always gets mentioned. 
Um, and I get it, like APA, if you've never encountered it before, it can seem daunting. It can seem like there are 10 million different rules. Um, I, I still suggest that APA is kind of easy. Um, it ju it's just a matter of taking the time to really uh, look at those rules and, and understand the basics of how they're functioning. Because once you understand that, then I think it becomes easy. It's just really a matter of chugging and plugging. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I hear I hear that a lot. Um, in my class, you had a couple of tools to help you. So I created an APA walkthrough video. Um, I sent out a, a long written explanation of how in-text citations work. But you also had lots of other um, documents, right, tutorials those PDF files that were uploaded as assets for the actual essay assignment, um, your McGraw-Hill readings, the, the assigned McGraw-Hill readings, I think for week two covered APA. Um, so yeah, you, you, did, you did have APA help in, in lots of different spots. Okay, and <clears throat> moving forward, yeah, the, these, these twin concepts of um, revision, reflection are kind of uh, what make up the core part of the activities for this week. Now, if we talk about the revision process, um, as I said, you, you've, you've, at this stage, you should have received a lot of feedback. Um, so you receive feedback from your peers. Um, I hope everybody at least received some feedback. Is there anybody in the room who didn't get re uh, feedback from fellow students? Um, I hope not. And like I said, you you, uh, you probably got feedback from your instructor. Like I said, my, my students are still waiting for feedback from me. Uh, but I imagine if you're in one of the other classes, you, you probably got instructor feedback. And if you didn't, it's, 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 it's probably also coming real soon. So that means you have a lot of, uh, a lot of comments to go through. Okay, uh, your peers' feedback, your instructor's feedback, and then it's time for you to kind of sort things out. Um, what pieces of advice make sense? Uh, what pieces of advice don't make sense. <clears throat> I always say use what's helpful and ignore the rest. It doesn't mean that you just throw out things that you automatically have a knee-jerk reaction over. I mean, make sure that uh, you read all the comments carefully um, and consider them um, after all. Um, in particular, your instructors probably have some pretty good advice to give, so you don't want to just throw it out automatically. Um, but your peers probably have some good advice, too. I think I mentioned this last week. Um, I'm always pleasantly surprised. I shouldn't be because it's just um, kind of common sense that other people are going to notice things that I miss. Um, but yeah, uh, your, your peers sometimes point things out that either I missed or maybe I was spending more time concentrating on other issues and I just didn't consider that specific issue. Uh, but when you put them, put them all together, instructor feedback, peer review feedback, um, you should have like a rich uh, variety of, of, of materials to, to sort through to help you with revision. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about revising. If you look at the word revision um, or revising, you can kind of see it, it, it includes um, two concepts, right? If, uh, if you look at the beginning of the word, R-E, which means to do again, right? So when we think of words like repeat, revise, redo, um, R-E has that sense of again. Um, and, and, and vising, of course, has the word vision um, embedded in it, okay? So really, we're, we're talking about to see things again, to see things anew. And at its essence, that's what revision is, okay? Um, and if you think about what we covered last week in terms of global concerns versus local concerns, remember global concerns are those big picture issues, um, <clears throat> the stuff that needs to be addressed first, things like focus, organization, content, and then local issues are the smaller stuff like uh, sentence structure, grammar, uh, proofreading, right, spelling, all that kind of stuff. Revision places its, its emphasis, obviously, more on those big picture issues, those local issues, because to truly, uh, you know, revise, to see things new again, to revision, um, it probably means that you're dealing with um, the, the larger parts of your paper. So if you had an issue with contents, um, that needs to be fixed when you revise. Or maybe, you know, uh, when you hand in your paper, you still quite weren't, you, you still weren't quite, um, discussing perseverance concretely, um, even though we've been talking all month, month about how just listing accomplishments isn't speaking directly to perseverance, 
or just listing uh, details about a person's life story isn't necessarily perseverance, right? Perseverance is that human story that exists behind those life details or behind those accomplishments. Um, so that's a pretty big picture concept. If you still weren't quite doing that in your essay, um, it's probably time to go back and, and, and look at those things. Um, so yeah, revising means to, <clears throat> to revision, to look at things um, brand new. Okay, but there are a couple different techniques you can use to revise. So I'm gonna go over those um, real briefly. Okay, if we look at, and, the, and you should remember this possibly from week two, um, the week two go to session that, that Ms. Fox held. Um, if we think of the basic structure of a paper, right? We can think of it in terms of, oh, this always happens. Uh, give me a second, my cursor has completely disappeared. Let me try to move things around. Okay, there we go. So if we think of the essay being broken out into different parts, this kind of white capsule up here uh, represents your introduction, right? An introduction, um, ideally, we're, we're finding a way to sort of grab the reader's attention. Um, there should be some sort of thesis or focus, um, which for a lot of you is just is, is some sort of clear statement that, you know, um, your role model is, is an example of perseverance or your role model um, persevered in the following ways. Um, and then you have three supporting ideas, um, and these represent your separate paragraphs. And then this white capsule here at the bottom um, <clears throat> represents your conclusion, right, where we kind of restate or echo our thesis or focus. So that probably means some sort of reminder or revisiting of um, your role model and her or his perseverance. And then we sum things up, okay, and we find a satisfying way to close the paper. Okay, but we all, we, already, we all know that, right? You learned that in high school. We have some sort of introduction or opening. We have body paragraphs, and then we have a conclusion. Um, and remember, too, that we're short of, sort of showing here like um, five paragraphs, but your essay could be more than five paragraphs. Um, we're just trying to keep this slide very, very simple. So one revision strategy is to make sure that you can see the separate parts in your essay. Is there sort of a general opening paragraph that sets the table for the rest of your essay? Or did you just dive right into the middle of things? Um, again, it's pretty much a, uh, a natural and standard opening move in writing to have some sort of introduction paragraph, um, some sort of reader-friendly general paragraph that that sets up the rest of the paper. So if you were just diving right into the thick of things um, by explaining uh, your role model's perseverance, that, that that's probably not appropriate for, for an introduction paragraph. Um, and then if you look at your body paragraphs, again, <clears throat> the idea here is that you should have at least, you know, you should have at least just one topic or one point or one example or one focus per paragraph. Um, so you might want to make sure that your your th your body paragraphs are doing this. Um, if you if you think back to week two, Miss Fox gave some different strategies for building the body of your paper. <clears throat> so, for instance, maybe you delivered your th let's say you had three examples of how your role model persevered. Um, you could maybe you devoted one paragraph to each of those uh, different examples, and then maybe there was another body paragraph or two where you discussed um, what you learned from that perseverance um, and then maybe there's a, also a paragraph on um, how this applies to you right in your future path both as a full sales student and um, an industry professional because that was part of the assignment as well not just to discuss perseverance but to discuss what you learned and how it applies to you <clears throat> um, so you might want to make sure that you have paragraphs that, that cover those things or in week two, Ms. Fox uh, introduced a different strategy, which is maybe you discuss all that at the same time. So maybe one paragraph focuses, focuses on one example of perseverance, and then you immediately discuss um, what you learned from it and how it applies to you. And then you move on to your second example, um, and then you move on to your third example. So whatever technique you used, okay? because um, there were a couple different options for how you wanted to put your paper together. Make sure that you can see that there are these separate parts, um, some sort of opening paragraph, um, body paragraphs that focus on um, different topics or different points and stay focused on those topics or points for the entirety of that paragraph, and then some sort of concluding paragraph. <clears throat> okay, and that's what's sort of captured here, just a reminder of, of how these 
how these paragraphs are functioning within the paragraph as a whole. So yeah, you might want to make sure that your essay is kind of fitting, fitting that litmus, litmus test. Um, another method is called the highlighter method. So literally you can go into Microsoft Word and use the highlighter function. Or if you're old school, you could print out your paper and actually use highlighter pens. Um, this technique is great if you're one of those writers who tends to want to get everything on the page first, right? You're, so you're someone who spits it all out and then you go back and organize. Um, if you're someone who's kind of a meticulous organizer from the beginning, maybe you have a, you work from a carefully detailed outline, um, maybe the highlighter technique isn't as useful. <clears throat> Um, but it's a good way to sort of look at your paper and make sure that things are are going together. So, okay, so here's just a, a sort of restatement of what we looked at on the last slide, okay? Um, an introduction, um, supporting paragraphs, uh, conclusion. The highlighter technique is literally just going through um, what you've put on the page and making sure that things add up because again if you're one of those writers who likes to just get everything out on the page um you know it's 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 sort of like the equivalent of um i don't know someone who uh, is creating a sculpture and they just make big chunks into the clay right um they don't work on like uh if it's a if it's a statue of a person or a sculpture of a person they don't work on crafting the the absolute perfect nose or perfect ear they start making like big chunks into the clay or maybe you're a painter and you begin with kind of broad splashes of paint and then over time the painting takes on form and you can actually see um the elements more clearly uh same thing with writing i mean maybe you begin by just getting all that stuff on the page uh but the danger there is maybe it's unorganized okay um, maybe you're jumping from topic to topic within a single paragraph um, so maybe one of your paragraphs does, doesn't stay focused on a concrete example of perseverance and you know it immediately jumps to another um, and 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 uh, maybe there aren't separate paragraphs about what you learned and and how it applies to you. Maybe those are just dropped in and mixed in with other elements. So if you use the highlighter method, it's a good way to make sure that that things are showing up in the same spots. Now here, because we're just using the example of a classic um, introduction, three separate paragraphs, conclusion. Oops, I didn't move. Mean to go that fast. Um, yeah, because we're just showing the kind of classic structure of a paper. Here, things are pretty much organized. Uh, but if you're using the highlighter technique, you might find uh, as you're going through, and by the way, for this technique, you should be looking at every single sentence in your paper and giving it a color. Okay, so if you know that there are three specific examples of perseverance, um, you might make those three different colors. Um, if you know, because the assignment sheet requires it, that you also have to discuss what you learned from perseverance and how it applies to you personally, you might make those different colors. Um, and then you go through literally every line of your paper and assign to each sentence a specific color. Um, you try to match it as best as possible as, oh, this sentence is best working as support. Uh, for this idea, and then you attach a color to it. Um, and the goal here is that if you're starting to see parts of your paper where there are lots of different colors mixed together, then that might be a sign that things aren't very organized. Okay. Um, ideally, you know, those those separate paragraphs, for example, should be pretty much one solid color. Okay. Um, again, paragraphs have very specific um, have a very specific topic or focus or example for that paragraph. And we don't jump to other things. Uh, so the highlighter, the highlighter tech can just remind you um, when you're drifting off track. <clears throat> um, it's also good, for, yeah, for visual learners. If you're someone who, who loves kind of uh, visual cues, um, the highlighter technique might work really, really well. Okay, but those first two strategies, just looking at the paper overall and making sure that it fits sort of the classic essay structure, introduction, separate body paragraphs, conclusion, or using the highlighter technique to make sure that you're also doing that, um, those are kind of global issues, right? You're looking at the bigger parts of your paper. Um, but yeah, local concerns, it's not that they're unimportant. As a matter of fact, at the revising stage, because you're working on your final project, it is important to make sure um, that grammar errors are greatly reduced, uh, that you're proofreading carefully, okay? That you're following rules of capitalization. Um, so there is an editing component, and editing means that we're focusing more on those local issues, those smaller picture issues.
Um, and a good technique to use for this is, is what's called the last to first method. And it is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, we look at our paper and we begin with the last sentence and then we move to the sentence before that and then the one before that and so on. Okay, so we're essentially reading the paper backwards <clears throat> um, because it's a great way to look for proofreading and grammar errors. Um, I think Miss Fox mentioned this in another session, so I'm not going to repeat her example, but remember she said that the brain has a way of automatically filling in what your mind expects to see. Um, so when you just read your paper from beginning to end, um, I mean, that's okay. But the problem is, is that your mind might fill in. Um, for example, let's say there's a word that's missing from your sentence. Like it's just completely missing. Like you might not even see it because your mind is already filling in that missing word. Uh, but if you read the paper backwards, you stand a better chance to see those, um, those mistakes. Okay. Um, also, yeah, stepping away from your project f for uh, a moment uh, can help you clear your mind. Um, probably you can relate to this. There comes a moment where you've just looked at your paper too many times. Um, you're sick of seeing it. Um, all the sentences, uh, you know, if you're really, really tired and worn out, all your sentences can start to look terrible to you, even though they're not. Uh, but because you've, you haven't taken a break, um, you need to. So you can come back to it. And I can tell you firsthand that this is incredibly practical. Um, there have been lots of times where, and, and the opposite can happen too. Sometimes you absolutely love what you've written. Um, you, know, you spend a couple hours, you read it over and you think, wow, this is awesome. But I can't tell you the number of times I've gone to sleep and then I wake up the next morning and reread what I've written. <laughs> and it's not as great as I thought it was. Um, so yeah, taking breaks, taking a step away from our work uh, can help us see things uh, from a fresh perspective. Okay, so yeah, and if you can get like an extra set of eyes on it, that's also useful. So maybe you have a friend or a family member or a fellow student, uh, maybe a, one of your classmates who can help by, by reading your work. Um, if not, remember you have the Full Sail Writing Center available to you. I'm gonna go ahead and type in their email address onto the, uh, the chat window writing center at fullsale.com. I also say it out loud because people who watch this session after the fact cannot see the chat. Okay, um, this is a really good thing to take advantage of. Um, remember, it's open to campus students and online students. So if you're not here in Orlando, it's just a matter of contacting the writing center um, and setting up an appointment and that appointment will occur online. Uh, using GoTo training, right? So the exact technology we're using right now, and you can work one-on-one -on -one with um, with the Writing Center tutor. Now they won't proofread your paper for you. They're not going to fix uh, errors for you, okay? But they can certainly help uh, spot patterns. Um, you know, maybe point out uh, things that are happening somewhat regularly in your writing that you could work on and they can certainly maybe look at an example or two of that and and work with you to 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 see those those issues and to and to fix them so just remember um that you have that available to you um yeah and just a quick reminder that effective revision takes time so make sure that you're creating enough time to work on these things okay because um if you look at the rubric, okay, so the grading rubric for this final project, you'll notice that, yeah, you get scores for things like contents and organization, but there's all, there are also penalties. So if no significant revision occurs, um, I believe there's a 20 point penalty for that. So basically if you're just handing in the exact same paper again, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a point deduction taken off for that. Uh, so be careful. Uh, the reason why this, this week is largely free of activities, you just have to keep working on that final McGraw-Hill Learn Smart Achieve module. Um, but otherwise, you know, there's a weekly check-in to take. But otherwise, the, the week is completely yours to focus on this final project, okay? We understand that it takes time. Uh, but because we're giving you that time, yeah, we also expect that the true revision is taking place. And now I'm going to end with just some reminders of what the final project needs to include, okay? There are different parts. Um, and then I also wanna talk about um, if you happen to use images or sound files in your project, um, what you need to do. Okay, so let me switch gears real quickly and go to the assignment sheet. 
Okay, so this is page two of the final project assignment sheet. Um, so just look for the part that begins with instructions. And you'll see uh, it's, it's basically a portfolio. Um, and it says, yeah, it's a portfolio uh, portfolio of your completed work. It consists of two files. Uh, don't don't be fooled, though. It actually, it, yeah, two files, but it really it, it covers three main pieces. Um, one is a final revised version of your essay. Okay, so you're taking the essay you handed in in week two and that you just got feedback on, or for my students, you're going to get feedback real soon, and you're going to revise it, okay, um, in its standard form. Um, so if there are content issues or organization issues or research issues, you're going to work on that. You're going to fix that. You're going to improve it. If there were APA issues, um, you're going to repair those as well. Um, and you're going to hand in that revised document. Okay. So that's one of the two files that you'll upload. Um, second, you'll, you're going to hand in another version of the essay, but this is the essay um, that that's delivered in a completely different format. Um, the one you selected back in week two. Now, if you want to change your mind, that's fine. Okay. Uh, the, really the important thing here is that we're handing in the essay in a new format. Um, there are a couple reasons for this one. It's a principle that's important at full sale that students know how to write, not just in, yeah, I mean, the traditional sense is important. Right, following rules of grammar and structure, and being able to follow APA formats, and 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 handing it in in a professional-looking uh, Microsoft Word document. But it's also 2015. Okay, writing takes lots of different forms, um, except in the classroom. You're not really encountering Microsoft Word documents that much. Um, what you're encountering are, for example, people's professional blog sites. Um, okay, not just someone's personal blog where maybe the, the quality of writing is, is you know, just okay. But, you know, there are a lot of uh, professional blog sites, uh, people who are professionals within the industry um, who keep up uh, with, 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 with news and events in their field and write about them in a professional level in, for example, a blog space. Or, you know, you're probably more familiar with, like, magazine articles. Um, okay. So yeah, like blogs, magazine articles, um, podcasts, um, some interactive media form, like a presentation, um, you'll encounter writing in lots of, um, uh, diverse ways, uh, that go beyond just, you know, um, a double spaced Microsoft word document. So yeah, we, we want students to get some practice at that. Uh, because yeah, I, I do think it's important. I mean, most of you are going to head out into the world and you're going to continue to write. I mean, sometimes, I mean, sometimes students try to argue with me and say that they won't, but then I always say, uh, yeah, you will. <laughs> Whether it's a resume or cover letter, or whether it's you developing your your online presence, okay, you're you're probably going to be writing, um, in 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 some way, um, and that means engaging with writing, um, yeah, in one of these sort of tech friendly um, formats. So why not get a a, a head start on practicing that now? Um, your final revised version of the essay is also going to include um, your reflection. Okay, so if we go to the next page, um, you get more, yeah, you get general advice on reminders of what we just covered in this session about revising and editing, um, about choosing your, your, your new format, okay? Um, but then reflect on what you've learned. So you're gonna add a new page to the end of your APA style version, okay? Um, after the references page. So actually, I had that a little bit backwards. Um, your new format is going to be in its new format. So whatever you choose, um, presentation, a magazine article, a newsletter, um, podcast, something like that. Uh, but that revised paper, okay, the, the traditional version, um, right after the references page, you're going to add a new page. Um, you're going to title it Reflection, and you're basically going to address these prompts. Okay, I'm not going to read them out loud. You can read them on your own, but they're on the assignment sheet. Uh, what were you expecting from this English course? Did it meet your expectations? Uh, how confident were you in your writing abilities? And so on. Okay, so yeah, you have, I think, uh, six reflection questions to answer in detail. Um, remember, you're writing a short kind of mini essay, so you're not just copying these questions in and then answering them. Um, you're not just giving me detached answers and leaving it at that most students yeah they can they can create a sort of mini essay where they're answering these questions but doing so naturally in paragraph form 
okay? <clears throat> um, but don't forget that because every month I get students who they leave out a core component. They either don't revise that original essay and then they lose points or they don't hand in the reflection right they don't they don't create a new page right after the references page where um, they include their reflection essay so they lose points for that um, occasionally it doesn't happen often but sometimes yeah students even forget to hand in the paper in that new delivery format so they lose points for that so remember there's sort of three key components a revision of your original essay um, handing in your essay in its new formats um, and yeah making sure that the reflection is included there by the way, if you have um, questions, go ahead and I mean, be sure to be asking them in the chat. Things have sort of gotten quiet over there. Although Logan just asked right now, uh, format for the reflection essay. Yeah, I mean, APA format, which which in this case is real simple. Um, let me see if I can. OK, so I'm going to open up a Microsoft Word document real quickly. <clears throat> let me check my desktop. Do I have anything that would work? No, I think I lost that document. Okay, you're just going to have to imagine that you have a fuller paper in place here, right? Let's say there are three, four, or five pages. Um, you're just going to begin a new page and make sure, let's see, do I have all this set right? No, that needs to be Times New Roman. Okay, you're going to just make sure that after your references page, there's something called Reflection. And yes, Logan, it's going to be double-spaced. And it's going to be 12 point font, so I'll go ahead and fix that as well. Change it to double spacing. All right, so actually, all these margins would be changed. They're not set to one inch right now, like APA format requires, but we'll just uh, imagine that it is. Okay, and uh, your reflection goes here. Okay, I'm actually going to copy and paste that so I can keep talking as I type away okay so yeah you're gonna have a, a reflection on the final page that looks something like this um, the good news is if you got APA mostly correct in its first version hopefully all those issues of like margins and header will be already be in place so you can see like um, there's no header here uh, and I, I don't know why it's there we go. Okay, but if but if you hand it in your week two version um, correctly, you'll you'll yeah you'll have your header and your page numbers, and it's just a matter of adding that reflection page at the end. <coughs> Excuse me. Logan says how, uh, length. How long? Um, I don't know. <laughs> However long it takes to answer those six prompts, I would say most students it's it's I don't know on the short side maybe a full page. I'd say most go for like a page and a half, and some students really get into it, and it goes for two pages, two and a half pages, um, just as long, just as long as you're answering those six prompts uh, pretty carefully. Okay. Um, oh, I wanted to show something else real quickly, so let me jump. Bear with me, people. We're 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 winding down, so don't worry. Within the next six or seven minutes, we'll be done, and we'll be done early. Um, what did I want to show? Uh, it's in the week two stuff, I believe. <laughs> mm, okay, I think it's this one. Yeah, I'm trying to bring up the week two, the actual essay assignment sheet, because this had some details. Yeah, here. Okay, so back in week two, it, it discussed these issues. Like next, decide on a delivery format, blog post, magazine article, uh, keynote or PowerPoint presentation, or video. Okay, so those are sort of the four formats that we'd like you to choose from. If you have one that doesn't quite fit that, you might want to speak with your instructor. But we'd like, these are the most common ones, and I think they're the easiest ones to deal with. Um, for example, the keynote PowerPoint presentation, you can just use your skills that you learned in creative presentation. Okay, um, I know that for some of you, you might have taken the course back when it had a different title, but I think we're we're deep enough into that course where most of you took creative presentation. Uh, if you want to confirm that in the comments section, you can go ahead and do so. But yeah, like there's a natural transition. Why not take what you learned in that class and use it here? Um, a magazine article. I, I put newsletter, like Logan asked about earlier, in that category. Um, 
you know, and, and by the way, Microsoft Word has some templates that you can use. They have newsletter templates. They have templates that can sort of um, imitate the structure and format of something that kind of looks like a magazine article. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't do everything for you. It, it sets up essentials. But in terms of like bringing in images to make that newsletter or magazine article um, look nicer or or be more appealing, um, that will require some extra steps. Um, sometimes it has it so, and this is difficult to describe, but you know how magazine articles, whether it's a traditional magazine or a magazine online, often has like a individual sections of the article that are kind of zoomed in and highlighted. They kind of appear in their own separate window within the article, right? It's kind of like, a, yeah, this is zooming in on a specific part. Like sometimes the, your, those, the, the Microsoft Word templates will have that set up. So you'll have to go in and choose um, a part of your essay that really you're proud of so it can be highlighted and stand out. Uh, but yeah, you have these really cool tools to help you. But what we really want is, yeah, you're getting some practice in putting your essay into a format that really matches the world of 2015. Because imagine you've written something that you really, really like um, and you think others could benefit from. Um, and maybe you do want to share it with the world. Um, maybe you do want it to appear on a blog post. Um, okay, so give it a try. Um, real quickly, I mean, if you do tackle the blog post it should be more than you just slapping words on a blog site and calling it a day okay uh, um, if you're familiar with blogging you should know that there are lots of tools at your, your disposal um, you can pick again a template that that looks really attractive you have the ability to add images um, you have the ability to highlight for example text within your 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 article uh, for example if research appears in your article um, your blog post, excuse me, um, highlighting it would be really cool because then your readers could just click on it and be taken to the article that you're referring to. Um, so yeah, like lots of little decisions like that can make your final project even more powerful. Um, uh, for the PowerPoint keynote presentation, again, I think you should be thinking in terms of what you learned in creative presentation. So you're not just taking the text of your essay and slapping it on slides because that's that's not very interesting. Okay. That's just you taking <laughs> taking the text and 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 just handing it in again. Essentially, <clears throat> it's just that they're appearing on slides instead of on a Microsoft Word document. No, that's not a presentation. Um, a presentation is more interactive. Um, if you want to follow the creative presentation concepts and use simple, effective visuals that act as sort of um, visual anchors for what's truly important, which is your um, professionally recorded delivery of the essay, that might be a good strategy. Um, okay, but yeah, you'll you'll decide what your format is. Yeah, okay. Logan says uh, our final project should be word for word exact to the essay. Yeah, I mean, if you need to edit very tiny things, like if it's not realistic that your, for example, your your magazine article would contain APA references, um, you can revise so that the actual citations don't appear in the article. That's why you hand in a revised version of your week two essay. So we see the APA version and we see that you know how to handle it. Uh, but yeah, if your chosen format, it, it's a little bit awkward to include uh, those things. You can certainly <clears throat> change those small details. Or I mean, if, if you need to make tiny edits here and there, here or there, uh, so that it better fits your your format, that's fine. But yeah, we're we're not like when we say to create a presentation, um, we're not suggesting that you're reducing your entire essay to, for example, a few bullet points uh, put on each slide. That's why I recommend the if you're going to do a a, a slideshow or a or a PowerPoint type thing, maybe to really just follow the creative presentation technique which is, you know, you'll have your visual elements, which is whatever you choose to have on your slides. And those will just act as sort of um, visual anchors, right? Uh, attention grabbing things, um, things to keep the viewer's interest while you deliver your essay read out loud. Okay, and if it's a creative presentation, you know all about this. You know how to combine um, a professionally delivered recording with, um, appropriate and effective visuals. Um, did I miss something? Or yeah, or uh, Miss Chapman makes a good point. Or 
you can put a lot of effort into the visual look of those slides, but then include the text in slide notes. So that could, yeah, if you're, if you're not crazy about recording yourself or you already did that in creative presentation and you don't really want to want to do that again, even though it's not terribly difficult, um, yeah, you can include the actual text on, on in your notes. Uh, but again, you'd, you'd be following those principles you learned in creative presentation. Um, Joshua says, for our final project, the essay is still limited to a max of 1,400 words. Uh, yes. Is that the maximum, by the way? <laughs> I, I, I should know. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll take the I'll take the Joshua's words for it, uh, word for it. Um, okay, I'm not going to look for it now. Uh, 700 to 1,400. Okay, then yes, you should be sticking to that word count. Um, Real quickly, let me just show because maybe you're you're going to use uh, again if you choose like let's say a template for a newsletter or my or a magazine article type thing, or you're going to create a blog and you want to add images, or or for your presentation you want to include images. Just a reminder that you have to you can only use images from allowable sources. Okay, and there are two big ones that I recommend. One is if you go to the Full Sail Library. Uh, the Full Sail Library, okay, so we already know how to go here because you had to do so for your research. Um, if we go back to research databases, okay, you have a couple cool tools. One, I'm going to open into a new window because I'm going to go back to it. Uh, Westar Music, so I'm going to open that in a new tab. But near the top, you have this AP Images collection. Okay, it's part of the EBSCO host set of tools. And what's cool here is you have all these images that are allowed to be used. Okay, so I'm going to go into it. Um, AP Images is great if you're looking for things that relate to current events or things that are in the news or specific people. For example, maybe your chosen role model is big enough that they probably have an image here. So AP stands for Associated Press. So if you go to like CNN.com or you're reading another or the New York Times, uh, probably a lot of those photos that you're seeing that accompany a story come from the Associated Press. So if I type in Oprah Winfrey, because I have some students writing about her, she'll probably pop up plenty. And yeah, as you can see, she's a pretty big figure. So uh, she comes up in the AP images a lot. Um, but if your role model isn't as well known, or if you're looking for um, pictures that express concepts, um, I'll, I'll show you a site that's better for that. Logan says, how do we cite non-copyright images or sounds? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that too in a second, because you do have to cite any images or music that you use, and it has to be done in APA format. But here, just, just showing that, like, okay, let's say I like this picture of Oprah. You can then download it. Um, and use that image. The, the main thing you need to grab is this number here, the AP images number. Okay. And I'm actually, I'm going to try to leave this open because I'll come back to it and discuss how to cite. Um, if you need to use music in your presentation or you want to use music, um, Westar Music, which is part of the database, is also a good tool. I'm going to go ahead and log in. You get this uh, full sale login to use. And basically, these are tracks that normally would cost anywhere from $15 to $60, but you get to use them for free. Um, and yeah, they have, the, 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 I mean, they're real songs or compositions written by people, but they're sort of kind of generic, sort of like elevator music. Like they have these really corny titles like Rock, Pride of Place, <laughs> or uh, Rock on the easy side. Uh, but if you go through a number of these albums, you might be able to find um, music that you can use in the background. What I don't want to see, yeah, is, is any copyrighted material. Okay, so uh, you want to spruce up your presentation with music. Great, but um, I don't want to hear, uh, what are some songs I like right now? Uh, oh, that Demi Lovato song, Cool for the Summer. I love that song. Or uh, uh, that Major Laser, Major Laser song, Lean On, or... Uh, uh, Wildest Dreams, Taylor Swift. Okay, I love all the songs. They're awesome, super awesome. But I do not want to hear them in your presentation, okay? I don't want to hear Rihanna in your presentation. Uh, I, I don't care that you're – well, I should say I don't care. That sounds harsh. But, um, yeah, it's great if you're writing about Jay-Z, but I don't want to hear Jay-Z's music appear in your presentation, okay? So nothing copyrighted. Um, it's something that Full Sail takes really seriously. You're all heading into industries where you'll have to uh, respect copyright law. 
Um, so if you're studying graphic design, you're not just going to be able to grab whatever image you want and use it. Um, if you're heading into the music industry, you're not going to be able to take even a few seconds of another person's song and use it uh, without either paying for it or, or paying royalties for it. Okay. Um, if you're heading into film and television, you're not going to be able to do it. If you ever watch the news or you watch uh, Sports Center, right? W watch the end of these 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 shows. There are always credits given for everything you've seen during that show. Um, so yeah, you can't just go out and grab whatever you want. Um, so yeah, if, if you need sounds, West Star Music is great because then you can go into an individual album and you have all these tracks, right? Okay. And when you find one, it's just a matter of going through the checkout process and you won't be charged, but then you, you'll get an MP3 file that you can use. And if you actually click on the song itself, you get all the information you need to be able to cite it. So like here's a date, um, here's a composer, okay? Um, there's an album title. Uh, so we have everything we need to create an AP citation for whatever track we use. Uh, Ms. Chapman is recommended and recommending, uh, what is it? Uh, AP images or Oxford art database. And she, yeah, she's mentioning the one I want to get to, which is compfight.com. And I have that open in a window here. And she's also gone ahead and typed the URL in the chat. Compfight is great when you need to look for sort of non-specific things. Like if you want to look up a picture of Jay-Z or Oprah, yeah, they're going to be in the AP images database because they're, they're in the news a lot. So there's probably photographs of them. But if you need general photos that communicate an idea, like let's say you need an image of a classroom um, or you need an image of students or you need an image of puppies, Okay. Um, first of all, anything above the dotted line, don't touch. It's just, um, it's a shill for another site and you should never have to pay for anything. So we look below the dotted line. The other, the other important thing is to the left here uh, to make sure that we click commercial. If you click creative commons, that's okay too. Um, technically we should be clicking commercial uh, because Full sales at for profit university, which is just a fancy way of saying um, anything created by instructors, anything created or handed in by students is technically the property of full sale. Um, so, yeah, they don't even want conflicts with copyrights um, when it comes to student work. OK, um, but, yeah, if you select commercial or creative commons, uh, but commercial is your best choice, um, then whatever appears below this dotted line will be a some rights reserved image, not an all rights reserved image. Um, and that's what we want. We want some rights reserved because then we can use it um, as long as we give credit. So, ooh, which one do I want to choose? They all look so cute. Uh, I like this guy here. Uh, probably your, pres your final project is not going to contain images of puppies. But, okay, as you can see here, um, yeah, that's what we want, some rights reserved. And then we can pick uh, the quality of the image, right, the size we want to use. Um, and maybe there's a better way to do this, but I just recommend to students, uh, don't take the full HTML because you don't need all that. You're not creating a web page. But to go in and grab the URL, and you, you all know what URLs look like, so it's just it's just this thing here, okay? Because we'll need that in order to cite the photo. And real quickly, before we close the session, Logan was asking, how do we do this? Um, it's pretty simple in the sense that we're really just following the exact same APA rules that we've been using to create ones for article titles or video files, um, right? In an article, you have author's last name, uh, first initial, date, title of the work, um, uh, title of the publication or website where it was published, okay? The, the same thing applies to music or images, Okay, so I grab that URL, which will bring up the puppy picture itself. Okay, and yeah, we, well, for some reason, okay, there we go. Um, so we have everything we need. Okay, we have a date. It looks like it was taken on May 1st, 2013. Um, this is the author, Andres um, Moreira. Um, this is his title, I assume. What's up, Doc? So we can start creating our APA reference. Okay, so I'm going to 
your references actually would go before your reflection, but just to teach good concepts, I'm going to go ahead and real quickly make this look like an APA document. Ah, I have too many things open. Okay, so I've set my margins to one inch. And then I can create my references page. Okay, and then I can start building my references uh, for that. So what was that guy's name? Morera, something like that. Andres. Okay. That actually needs to go over to the left. Morera. Did I spell that right? Okay. Uh, 2013. Uh, the title was What's Up Doc. Okay. Uh, the other, uh, the important thing, and this goes for music, for videos, is that in brackets, we, we, we do try to identify what type of file this is. Because if we don't, people will just automatically assume it's, it's, it's an article by default. So we just have to put in a, a description that matches. So some people will put like photograph. Or you, or you can put image, or you can, you know, you just put something that, that matches what you should, okay? And then we'll put our retrieved from line, okay? And our URL, and we'll have it match the destination formatting so it's all in the same font size and style. Um, this needs to be indented a little bit. Oops. Oops. Ah, <laughs> I hate this. There we go. Okay. Uh, so, boom, APA citation. Um, we could do the same thing with music. For example, we, if we go into Westar Music, <clears throat> um, we have all the information that we need. Okay. Um, I'm not going to build it, but it would be the same. Okay. Um, Hain and what was the other songwriter's name? Okay, author's uh, last name, first initial, um, the and symbol, and then the other composer's last name and first initial, then year in parentheses, then the title of the song. Um, here we actually have a name for the album, so we would include that. Um, for example, with the photograph, we have no uh, nothing really to put, uh, but for that album, we would put things like uh, rock, uh, pride of place. Okay. And in brackets, we would just put something like, a, I don't know, music recording. Okay. So it, so it really is just a matter of you're following the exact same rules that you've been following all along. You're just adapting them to uh, the new formats. Uh, the only thing I don't know, uh, Miss Chapman can help me out. She knows APA. Am I supposed to be capitalizing the words music or recording or photograph? I can't remember, and I'm too lazy to <laughs> to look it up. <laughs> I can't remember, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, you're you're essentially you, you're doing the same thing you did for APA in week two. Um, you're but you're just adapting it for an image or uh, a music file. Okay, so a music file doesn't have an author, but it typically has a composer. Um, Okay, yeah, Ms. Chapman says, no, this doesn't have to be recorded, the material in brackets. Um, if it's an image, okay, you don't have an author, but you have a photographer. But you'll have all the rest of this information, okay? And, yeah, if there's no date, right, you'll just put the expression ND. Um, if there is no title um, or if there is no author, right, the title would appear first, not an author's name. Um, for images, sometimes they'll have, like, a username. Uh, so if there is one, just use that, even if it seems silly, like if, if Hot Mama 97 made that, made, uh, took that image, <clears throat> you would credit her. I assume that's a her. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you're, you're following all the same APA rules. You're just adapting them to the different, the different file types. Um, okay, questions. I actually went a little bit longer than I planned to, uh, but I do think that was useful so, so people can get a sense of what you need to do. Um, Questions, concerns, now's the time to ask them. You can ask them in the chat or you can raise your hand if you're feeling brave and ask your questions out loud. Uh, but yeah, remember the basics, okay? Three things to hand in. Revised version of your standard essay, um, your essay in a new format, um, 
and yeah, make sure that you include the reflection essay. And okay, good. Miss Chapman just gave you a link. So if before you leave the room, you might uh, copy and paste that or go to the link and bookmark it. Uh, but it, but yeah, it turns out that Full Sail Connect has a video on how to cite images. Okay. Um, I'm going to hang out a little bit to answer questions. If you are completely clear with what we went over uh, today, you are feel uh, you can feel free to enjoy the rest of your day. You don't have to stick around, um, but I will to answer questions. So thank you so much for attending. Uh, Josh says, this is the week when Miss Fox is out and I was seeing who do I contact if you have any questions. Do you know what day she's out until? I know she's out of town. Uh, you can go ahead and contact me. I'm going to go ahead and put my email address in the chat. Okay. So, yeah, if there's some question, you, you immediately need some sort of response from an instructor on something big or small, um, just go ahead and shoot me a message. Okay. Because, yeah, you won't be able to send me a message through, like, the FSO platform. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording because it seems like things are slowing down. So I'm going to stop the recording now.